Hello, and thank you for watching and listening. And today, my name is Mark Blatstein, the physician founder of Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service. Today, I'm going to be discussing self-surrendering and surrendering to either a federal prison camp, FPC, versus a satellite camp, prison camp. They're both the, basically the same federal prison camps, as I said, are pre-standing. Satellite camps are adjacent to higher security facilities. Sometimes the program is offered at at satellite camps there are more of a variety but i'm going to concentrate on what i consider the overriding caveat which, which is being unprepared and that i consider being paramount which means that <clears throat> as you after the guilty verdict as you prepare for the pre-sentence interview you really have to have guidance in addition to your attorney with someone who is familiar with the federal bureau of prison system as you prepare for the pre-sentence in interview and understand the importance of the interview, your personal narrative, your allocution, which is your conversation with the judge, and then the importance of how your reentry plan is going to be received with your first time that you speak with your, your case manager. And so now back to myself, I had my felony. I was 2006. I I've been in practice for 30 years. Uh, I was charged with a count of uh, mail fraud, wire fraud, and <clears throat> I was not the best defendant at that time. I was a deer in headlights. I'm grateful that I was able to get my medical license reinstated, but I was not that smart at the time. And consequently, I went through this system twice. And that's the story for another YouTube but my experience gave me the ability to evaluate both a federal prison camp and a satellite camp. And so my first time into the federal prison camp was Pensacola, Florida. The secretary came out. She told me every, everything was going to be fine. To me, it looked like just any old prison, except there was no razor wire. I was unprepared. I didn't know what to expect. There were guys in there, pretty rough looking, but they were nice. They were working their way down from higher security prisons. To them, it was like Disneyland. The rooms house anywhere from six to 200 guys. I was in a room of 200. I didn't know any better. Um, I was across from the showers. Again, I didn't know any better, so it didn't bother me. I didn't notice any strict policy when I got there, got there because I just moved smoothly from the secretarial room that I was in into the prison. There was an orientation. There was nothing called the First Step Act that I can recall at that time. There was a lot of contraband, but all of that went over my head because I still was at deer in headlights. And I just didn't pay any attention. Most of my time was I spent walking the track. And in hindsight, none of this was terrible. But again, I was unprepared. And being that deer in headlights, I have to say that I did not give a 100% accurate explanation to my attorney as to what happened and for my defense. And so that is on me. But when I was talking to those that were, if you will, other inmates with me, I let them know that I was going to appeal the indictment, not the sentence. And all I got with it was a, resound was a resounding, no, don't do this. But I thought, well, what can happen? I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not appealing the sentence, just the indictment. And so one year, one day came, I went home and the day for the appeal. And uh, I went in and the judge said he didn't want to see me back in the same courtroom. Well, guess what? He didn't. And the gavel hit this his desk and off I was to another year and a day sentence, this time into a satellite camp. And brother, that hit me like a ton of bricks. This time I got to see fences, guard towers, walls, guns razor wire, and very strict policies. I went through the screening and I was locked in solitary confinement. And when I was put in a cell, I was a basket case. It was like, I wasn't prepared for that. What am I doing here? And the guards thought I was just a nutty white guy. Until it got to the point where they called psychology or psychiatry, the woman came down, They let, she let me out of the room. They put me in a small room. She wanted to know, am I suicidal? And I told her, no. She wanted to know if I was anxious. And I said, look at me. Yeah. She wanted to know if I was you know, depressed. And I went, well, yeah. 
She wanted to know why. And I said, well, if you look at the piece of paper, I was told to come here today. The paperwork that directed me here is driving down the road, but I can't call them. I was already in Pensacola. The paperwork is in your system. I don't know what's going on, but I'm stuck in solitary confinement. Back to the caveat, it's being prepared. I wasn't prepared. And this is part of the motivation that redirected me from while my license was reinstated and I can be seeing patients several years back, I decided to transition because if I can take what I know and impart part of it off to you, then hopefully you can be paired as you face this life altering event called federal prison. I thank you for taking the time to listen. I hope you found this helpful and have a good day. Please share if you can and subscribe.